small talk only allows inheritance from one superclass. This means that objects can only be classified in one way. This is a significant problem for some applications. Other object oriented programming systems allow multiple inheritance which helps to elevate this problem. As I mentioned before, inheritance allows the user to extend the existing program to do required functions. The diagram mentioned in the slide is an example of inheritance. As you remember, first we created a class called person and there are two other classes which is custom class and vendor class. These classes are subclasses of the person class. So the customer and vendor classes inherits the behavior of the person class. This is the coding example of it. Person is our superclass, subclass is the keyword and customer is our class which is the subclass name. The second one is also inherited from the person class so you can see the key person is the superclass, subclass is the keyword and vendor is the subclass name. Now let's move on to method override. Also unlike most other languages, constructors being ordinary methods in small talk. They can be inherited and overridden so subclasses need not to redeclare constructors of the superclasses like C sharp and Java require. On the instance side of a class, I could if necessary override the initialize which is automatically called by the default new constructor. This is useful when you want to initialize your own instance variable on object creations rather than lazily. This is an example of it. Now let's move on to abstract classes. Abstract classes provide behavior across a set of subclasses but it will never have its own instances. There are two types of method that abstract classes provide. The first type provides a complete method that a subclass inherits. The second type provides a method interface that is common to all subclasses but contains no code. The figure shown in the slide indicates the abstract classes as a shaded block. The abstract classes collection, sequenceable collection, additive sequenceable collection and array collection provides a common set of messages to their subclasses. Each subclass provides its own code to override the skeleton method. This skeleton method is defined as the common protocol to all the subclasses but does not provide a common implementation. Now let's move on to polymorphism in small talk. If a small talk object receives a message, it checks whether it understands the message. If it does, the appropriate method is executed otherwise an exception is raised. The complete message forms the selector which corresponds to a signature. Methods with the same signature can be implemented in independent classes. The example shown in the slide is a good example of polymorphism in small talk. Even if class object is a common ancestor of every class in small talk, A and B have no common base class which implements hello. 
A is a subclass of the object class and B is also a subclass of the object class. A implements a method called hello and B also implement a method called hello. In A's hello method it outputs a message saying example of A and in B's hello message it displays a message called example of B. Now let's see what's happened when this code is executed. You can see we have created an instance of A and also we have created an instance of B. And first we call the A's hello method and secondly we call the B's hello method. So when this message calling is done, first it will display example of A and secondly it will display example of B. During the runtime, a variable may hold examples of any of these classes and it will behave correctly when receiving the message hello. This forms of polymorphism does not depend on type system or inheritance. It is verified during runtime whether a message is known to the receiving object. Therefore, the compiler cannot detect if inappropriate messages are sent to objects. This special form of polymorphism is called signature based polymorphism as opposed to inclusion polymorphism which is also referred to as inheritance bound polymorphism. So that concludes our short video presentation on some object oriented concepts in small talk. I hope you will note from the sample code shown so far everything is done using only objects, their instances and their methods. There is no special syntax or keywords for creating classes or their construct. In fact, there are only six reserved keywords in small talk. They are self, super, true, nil, and this context. By comparison, Ruby has 38, Java has 52, and C sharp about 76. This should underline just how much more small talk relies on pure object oriented and message passing rather than special language constructs. By being minimalist and only providing syntaxes for assignment, message passing, method return and a few special literal notations for things like string, arrays, numbers and blocks, small talk can be any language you want it to be. All of small talk's control and iteration structures are implemented in the library as ordinary objects with ordinary methods. There is simply no need for so many reserved words. So that concludes our video presentation and hope you enjoyed it and I encourage you to visit our other videos regarding object oriented implementation in PHP, C Sharp, Python, Java, C++. Thank you.